This is a story about a Finnish man named Timo and his boat which he built over a period of six months. The boat is constructed along the lines of an original Norwegian Viking ship which was built over a thousand years ago. The lines were copied off pictures from an encyclopedia. The original Viking ships were 76 feet long and crewed by 32 warriors. Although it is common knowledge that the Vikings invaded England, there is also evidence that they reached the Americas. Tim's boat is scaled down to 16 feet, and like the Vikings, he uses sail and oars to propel it. Tim's idea is to cruise around the Gulf of Carpentaria and Arnhem Land to capture video footage of the wildlife in these regions. Like the Viking ships, the sail can only be used in a following wind. When the wind is unfavourable, he has to resort to rowing the vessel. Because this type of vessel does not have a keel, it is easy for it to be manoeuvred in shallow water. For this reason, Tim feels that his boat is most suited to exploring rivers and lakes as well as mangrove creeks which are prevalent in the Northern Territory. Tim is an experienced sailor who has cruised the world with his late wife and younger daughter in a self-built sailing vessel. He is a free-spirited man, comfortable in the wild hunting for his food and utilising available shelters. Tim now takes up the story. The, my boat is a little bit different because I built it out of plywood and I glass it in, inside out with the epoxy and forearms mat. The uh, reason I done that, I, was, I have to be able to roll the boat and be able to manoeuvre it on, the, on a difficult situation, just the power of the oars only. And I got two pairs of oars here, the one here, it's been made out of, uh, I've been scavenging one old shipwreck and I found a Baltic pine and I built those oars out of that timber that I get. Also the mast and, and the cross beam here, they all been on the same material. Most of the fittings that I had on the boat been built out of mangroves and it, uh, it reason for that because when the mangrove grows, it grows on a different way. So you actually got the lot of strengths on the even small size of the timber. And they all hand carved it, it comes out of my my unconscious or whatever you can call it. But, but I I done it that for 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 reason. I just a bit of an artist on the way. And this piece here, I found a drifting wood on the on the beach in there on the on the Gulf of Carpentaria. And I carved that figurehead out of that and it's used like a modern Glues bit, bit together because it has to slide in and out onto, onto the figurehead. So I can take it off, put them inside, keep it on safe place in there. But I'm a bit superstitious man on the way. When I'm sailing on the open seas with it, I will keep the figurehead on. And uh, I've done a journey, a uh, long journey on, on, the, on the Arnhem land with the boat, uh, which is very, very, very dangerous area. They got four to five knot currents in there. When the wind, dried wind hit against the currents, it created a really bad breaking sea. But I was, I was so pleased and surprised of the capabilities of this little vessel. Now what I did done in here is not the original, but I have to have a, some kind of place where I'd be safe of the crocodiles. Because leaving it on the open boat in there will be invitation on the big fellows to get you off there. On the way, this, this thing here, it, it's a uh, it needs to be there because on areas where you've got a lot of crocodiles. Uh, this here, i got a, a hatch in there to go in there and I can... It's kind of tent living on the way because you, you just got enough room there to your supplies and food and water. But you'll be able to sleep safely inside. The boat had a flotation on the front and on the back and also underneath the seats had a flotation. So if I be unlucky one day to get a big wave over or the sea push me over, that boat will float. But it's another thing if I be able to ever ride it up, I might have to hang ring on the hull and, and you know hope the best. Got the anchoring point here which goes through the dead food and it makes a makes a very strong 
point. Because on a big sea, if you happen to get on a tight situation, you have to have enough uh, strength on your hull to be able to get the whatever dresses you had on the sea, you have to be able to handle it. This here, it's a, like a little opening in here, which I can get an extra airflow into the boat. And all the handholds here, if I have to come on the front, and it's also serving another purpose to holding my oars in here. But, but all these things are, are the safety reason, and I can hold on this one or that one. When I put my rigging on, there's only one modern clip I had here. Everything is all, all is made out of old-fashioned way, lasted in the, in the ropes and all second-hand salvage rope of the shipwrecks and all so on. Uh, the sail, it's, it's second-hand as well. It's been salvages of, <laughs> of one vessel and it's been re-cut and sewed on the, on the way. Uh, all the timber here, that's the same thing again, the Baltic pine, the mast, mast up Baltic pine, the blocks being made out of hardwood. And it, it basically the same like the same way the Norsemen done their fittings. So very simple, very efficient. You actually tie it up like that, and it, it it's very easy and quick to unton. I can lift the mast up. Probably takes me about five minutes to lift the mast up, lie it on the side, lash it on, and keep on rowing. So if I had a situation I have to go underneath something, and I'm worried about the mangroves where you where you get the boat in. I can actually take the mast off, taking me about five minutes. And same thing when you put it on, you lash it on the front and, and you put all these side things in there, get the mast on the right position, and then you tie it up the back rope and there you are, your mast is ready to go. Uh, in here, on this section, I got obviously two ropes, which uh, which holding the square timber here, which which controlling the top part of it. So if you happen to go on a bit of a side winch, you can actually turn the sail all the way around and you get a better drive that way. It's very very easy to control and, uh, and, and the way you, way you do it, you're just holding the ropes even on your hand and, and lash it around the, around the thing. But what I've done on the end of the, these ropes, I could have actually got a, like, a, like a loop, throw that over and give enough rope on this one obviously goes on the other side. But what it does when the sail is up, it's just lifting up like this and it still will be loose and you have to re-correct it when, you, when you're on the way. But that means you won't lose your ropes overboard on the heavy seas and all that. You always got a, some sort of connection. And on, on the end of these things, I had, uh, I had a rope like that. And it's, a, it's a, a more narrow, skinnier ropes. And it can be used on tight on emergency or anything if it needs to be. And I, I just figured that out by myself and, and just doing these sort of things, you sort of get a bit of an eye on it, what you should do and how you, how you operate. Uh, every fitting here is, is, is on the way, useful. On the back there, I've got a fittings where i got my anchor rope tied on, but it's been tied on the two places. So in an emergency, if I have to let all the anchor rope out just quickly, I got to connect it in here so I don't lose the... I've, what, I've seen people drawing an anchor up and it hasn't been connected onto their boat. And it's a, it's a bit of a bad boo-boo out there when you're on your own on the wilderness. But that is the main thing. I've got two places where I... These fittings are the one where I, I put it on how much I need it out. But if, if worst come worst, I'm always connected in here. Even if the big waves take the things out of my hands, it's, it's connected on the center point of the boat. Uh, another thing is these ones here, uh, those fittings are, are made for, for use on any kind of towing. And this here, that bucket here where I usually keep my anchor ropes and the anchor, can be lashed on each side. I've got a ropes in here which you, can be lashed in there and I've got a ropes on this side. So I don't have to turn it on the seaway. I can just slide it on there, lash it on, slide it on there, lash it on, wherever it's comfortable for me to, it need to be. And this place is here, I got a slot here and I got another slot here on this side of here. I got a two places for my hands, hand steering compass. I got a finished Sunto compass which just pushed in there or it pushed in there. But when, I, when I'm rowing it has to be on a different position, it has to be in here sort of thing because I'm here and, and it will be between. But when I'm sailing I push the compass in here and I can, I can steer it with that. So every little thing on the boat like that, it counts. And on the back of these things, I keep all the necessary things, which if I get on a bad seaway and I can't move too much around, I can nicely snook myself in on that steering position in there. And I got everything on that little back, which I needed on, on the emergency and quickly to get on the hand. 
I'm hoping that like that boats on the open sea can and really experience them. And also I'd probably like to take them right in the Gulf of Carpentaria one day, do a bit filming in there. And, and this sort of vessel you can you can actually row into the rivers without affecting a wildlife around you. And you can you can actually get a close shot. That's all I can really say of this vessel. And I have to say I'm very, very satisfied of the boat on many, many ways. And, and uh, like I said, Anything on the life is, is experiment, uh, for me it is anyway, I've been living that sort of life.